Guernsey. Recently I was walking alongside one of the many rivers that run through the Derbyshire Dales and I found this lovely little scene of a footbridge spanning a beck of quite fast moving water. I thought what a good subject this would make, so I did a quick sketch and took some photographs and now that I'm back in the studio I've transferred this to a sheet of £140 rough paper. I've left out the additional bridge on the left and also simplified the background to focus the attention on the bridge itself and the water. I've masked off a few areas and I'm ready to start mixing some colours for the sky and background. So using the number 16 brush, I'm going to take some cobalt blue, quite thin at first, keep it light, and I'm going to add just a little touch of rose madder to that to slightly warm it. Then I'm going to take some translucent grey. This is a nice colour for skies, it's almost a warm grey. And again, I don't want it too strong at first. Now before I paint those on, I'm going to get the number 10 brush. I'm going to take some cobalt blue again, and a touch of rose madder again. And now I'm going to take some raw sienna with a drop of burnt sienna in it. And I want a green, I'm going to take some aureolin with a touch of cobalt blue and a little bit of raw sienna. And the final colour I'm going to mix is, a, is quite a dark green with aureolin and translucent grey. So now that those colours are ready, I'm using a one inch flat brush, make sure it's got plenty of clean water on it. And I'm going to wet the whole of the sky area, ignoring the tree because it's got masking fluid on it, so that's protected, to an area that's going to be the bottom of the hill, just in the background there. I need to make sure it's nice and wet. And then I'm picking up the number 16 brush again, and the cobalt blue with a touch of rose madder in it, and I'm laying that across the top of the sky. A few glimpses of white paper are a good thing. And now I'm dropping in the translucent grey. Again, a bit stronger at the top and lighter towards the horizon. Now that needs a few moments to dry, but not totally dry. I'm waiting for the shine to go off the paper so that I can start painting in some loose shapes to suggest background trees. So now I'm picking up the stronger mixture of cobalt blue and rose madder that I made. And I'll just try it at first, just to see if we've got the right timing. I need to mix that a little bit stronger. I'm adding a bit more blue to it and I'm going to darken it slightly with a little bit of translucent grey. bringing it right down to the masking fluid and right down behind the bridge. Then with the same brush, I'm just cleaning it and picking up some of the raw sienna and burnt sienna and dropping that into the background as well. Letting these colors mix and merge on the paper. And keep working it along, allowing it to soften into the previous colors. Then a bit of the green. This is the mixture of aureolin and cobalt blue. Take it a little bit higher behind the tree there. And then I'm picking up the number 10 brush. I'm using quite a strong colour now, so I've picked a smaller brush so I don't overwhelm the other colours and I've got this richer mixture of aureolin and translucent grey just to get the colour a bit darker and a bit richer nearer to the ground so I can get a contrast of light in front of this and before we do the next stage I'll need to leave that to dry. Well now that the background's completely dry I've taken the masking fluid off the large tree on the left and I'm going to mix some colours for it. I've got a number 8 brush and I'm going to start with a nice bright colour, raw sienna with a little bit of burnt sienna. I also want some more green, a bit of aureolin and cobalt blue and then I need a dark side for the tree and I'm going to take some burnt sienna and add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it. Okay, so first of all, I've got a number four brush, plenty of the raw sienna and burnt sienna, 
and the light's coming from the left so we'll run this bright colour up the tree starting at the left hand side and then introduce a touch of the green and before those are dry I'm bringing the number 8 brush in straight away with the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue on it to encourage those to merge and create a rounded cylindrical look so it's more of the same now and then the same method really on this branch just a hint of the green on it because this is much thinner than the trunk I've got to be careful with the dark that it doesn't overwhelm it and then I just keep that at the underside before bringing off some more branches just this other branch here which has been masked out and again the dark and we'll bring some branches off from lower down as well I've got a few pencil marks which are giving me a guide but I don't have to stick rigidly to those it's better to actually feel your way with the brush well now that that's completed mix some colour for the ground behind the bridge and I'm starting with a, a nice bright green some oriolin with just a touch of cobalt blue in it and I also want a darker green which is oriolin and translucent grey and finally I want some more of the dark brown just like I used on the tree burnt sienna and ultramarine okay so I'll start with the number 8 brush and the bright green just beyond the tree so you glimpse a, glimpse a little bit of brightness on this field behind the bridge and then before long I'm going to introduce the darker green as I come right down to the water's edge there's a few rocks and stones there which I shall put in later and then at the very water's edge we'll get the nice rich dark brown in this is the burnt sienna and French ultramarine and I may as well carry on putting some colour in on this left hand side and we'll leave that to dry 